Good afternoon, Well Springs. I'm Christian Giordano. And I'm Kira Watson. A big change in the forecast. Is it here for good? Yeah, just in time for fall break, and no more Apple iTunes. What does this mean? We'll tell you. Science classes get creative to learn Newton's three laws. In social media firestorm over the tweet by the Houston's Rockets owners. All this and more coming up on WSMS News. Welcome back. This is Will Springs News. A roller coaster in the weather the past few days, but another big change is on the way. Here's Becca Hole at the forecast. Becca? Thanks, guys. I'm Becca Hole here with your local weather. Tonight, we have our first major cold front of the fall. We had quite a bit of a warm up today after temperatures dropped over the past weekend. However, tonight, temperatures will drop significantly. In fact, the low tonight may make it into the high 40s. We have good chance of thunderstorm with this front moving in. This will bring the temperatures down quite a bit as the front moves in later this evening. Look at the highs and lows for this weekend. Saturday's high is 67 and low is 44. Thanks, Becca. Our football teams took on Erickson Tuesday. Here's our sports crew with, the, with those results and more. This week, our 7th and 8th grade football teams matched up against Allen's Erickson. 8th was a home and 7th was away. Our 8th grade teams are still going strong with Red earning a record of 5-1 after their win against Allen's Erickson yesterday with a score of 28-14. And Black earned a record of 4-1-1 after beating Erickson 22-14. Also, our 7th grade teams are showing up on both our home field as well as the opposing teams. The 7th graders are out to an unbelievable start with Red being undefeated with 6 with a 6-0 record, and Black unfortunately losing against Ford, affecting the Black's 4-0 record, making them 5-1. The 7th graders are extending their lead with, after a victory against Erickson. Red won 22-0, and 7th graders Black team won 34-0. Upcoming this week, our varsity football team is playing Fisco Reedy tomorrow, and unfortunately, like last week, they're away. But besides, besides that, they are looking to add another win to their 4-1 record, their four and one re record against Fisco Reedy. <laughs> My name is Connor. We're here in Mason. So, how do you guys think the game went? Uh, I think we did pretty good. We were pretty consistent in everything we did. We had a really good game today. We uh, won by two touchdowns. with um, Alex Hernandez and Hunter Widener. Um, so how do you guys think you did? I think uh, offensive wise, first and second was okay, but third, yeah, we need to work on that. Uh, yeah, we did like, I said we did pretty good the first half and then third and fourth quarter, it started to get a little bit rough. But we pulled. Our 
Our volleyball teams are playing Curtis this week, 8th is away and 7th is home. After beating Erickson last week, our 8th graders are looking to catch another win this week against Allen's Curtis Middle School as well as our 7th graders. Cross country season is looking promising with the boys winning second in their last race and the girls winning first. We'll have more later with our local sports next week. That's it for local sports. Here's Brendan Cooper with national sports. Thanks, Aiden. Now for national sports. The Cowboys unfortunately lost to the Green Bay Packers Sunday, even though Dak Prescott threw for 463 yards and two touchdowns. And Zeke rushed for 62 yards and a touchdown. And Amari Cooper caught for an outstanding 226 yards and a touchdown. The Cowboys record stands at 3-2, and two, and they hope to get a win next Sunday against the 0-4 Jets. Don't forget about the Mavs' first game Wednesday, October 23rd at 7.30 p.m. The Mavs should look good this season because of key off-season additions such as Kristaps Porzingis, DeLon Wright, Seth Curry, Boban Marjanovic, and Isaiah, R Isaiah Roby. This college football weekend holds one of the biggest college football rivalries called the Red River Showdown against number six ranked Oklahoma and number 11th ranked Texas plays on Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Cotton Bowl. College football analysts predict Oklahoma is favored by a touchdown. That's it for national sports. Back to you guys. Thanks guys. There's been a firestorm on Twitter after the Houston Rockets NBA owner tweets about support for democracy protesters in Hong Kong. Here's Matt with headline news. Breaking news. A major move from China against the NBA is they block all games from their airwaves. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver tries to do damage control after the Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey tweets support for the pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. The Chinese Basketball Association is led by former Rockets basketball player Yao Ming. The NBA issued an apology for Morey's comments Sunday night. The apology inflamed U.S. fans where the protesters are seen generally as pro-democracy fighters battling a repressive government. Democrats and Republicans found common agreement in the calling the league gutless. The NBA is the number one sports league in China and big money for the NBA. Commissioner Silva is now backtracking. He's also added to Shanghai to smooth things over there too. Kroger and Walgreens are the latest retailers to stop selling e-cigs. This comes at the same time as e-cig maker Jewel Lab is being sued by two school districts, Ole Public Schools in Kansas and the Francis Howell School District in St. Charles, Missouri. The school districts accuse Jewel of being responsible for an epidemic of youngsters addicted to vaping. Jewel is under fire from the FDA for marketing their products as safer than smoking. Without scientific evidence, nearly 1,000 young people are hospitalized with a rare lung disease and 18 have died. Most of the victims are teenagers and young adults. Thanks, Matt. When we come back, we'll tell you some new changes in the social media app Instagram and an update in Apple, which just may confuse you. Thanks, guys. I'm Steve Irwin. And when we come back on Tuesday, next week, it's Red Ribbon Week. Red Ribbon Week is an awareness campaign celebrated by most schools in the USA to warn of dangers, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. Our school will have a pep rally, and we will dress up each day. Now, on Tuesday, we'll be cowboys. Now, come on here, cowboy. Now, as you can see, you're going to need to wear your favorite Dallas Cowboy time, or you can be a cowboy. So, why are, we, why are we being a cowboy? Uh, we're saying no to drugs and alcohol. And why are we being a cowboy? No more drugs, yee yee. Why are we being a cowboy? We're gonna ward off them drugs. I just, I, I, get out of here, cowboy! <laughs> now, on Wednesday, it is Jungle Day. Come on, Jungle Man! I'm also a Jungle Man, if you can't tell. But, what are we gonna do on Jungle Day? Uh, we're gonna say no to drugs. What, what are we gonna wear? Uh, jungle attire, like uh, this amazing hat. Yeah. All right, get out of here, jungle boy. Now, on Thursday, we're gonna peace out drugs. Come on, hippies. Hip, hip, hooray. All right, so hippies, what are, what are we gonna do to the drugs? Say peace out to the drugs. We're gonna say peace out to the drugs. We're gonna say peace out to the drugs. We're gonna put a rip in the chat for drugs. All right, hippies, see you later. Friday, it's blackout, and we're just gonna wear everything you have black, okay? Come on! Come on! Come on, blackout! Come on, blackout! You too. Alright, so what are we gonna do to drugs? We're gonna blackout the drugs. Put drugs in the dark. We're gonna blackout those drugs. Alright, now everybody, come here! Come here! This is what everybody should look like every single day, okay? Cowboy on Tuesday. Safari on third on Wednesday, hippie on Thursday, blackout on Friday. All right, back to you guys. 
Hey Willow Springs, the PTA Reflections Contest for 2019 is underway. This is an annual competition promoting student creativity and expression. Do you like dance choreography, film production, literature, music composition, photography, or the visual arts? Then the PTA Reflections is for you. This year's theme is Look Within. Go to txpta.org for rules and the entry form. The deadline to enter is October 28th. Good luck. The Willow Springs Theater's performance of Annie Jr. takes place on November 14th and 16th at 7 p.m. at the Lovejoy High School Auditorium. Tickets go on sale on October 28th, and there are $8 for kids and $12 for adults. Can't wait to see you there. Our online newspaper, Leopard Life, is up and running now. Here's Christian Giordano with the story. So it's going through and stuff. Have a lot of stuff that was right. it's the Leopard Life newspaper is up and running as of last week. The staff has worked very hard to make it a good quality newspaper and it has changed a lot since last school year. So it comes out about every six weeks and our first one came out last week. Um, last year we didn't have much of a newspaper. We, Although we wrote a lot of stories, uh, we didn't really publish them. Um, now we got the site up and running. To get to the paper, students and staff can go to the Little Springs website. There is a link on the website under quick links to go straight to the paper. So it's on the website and you can go to Willow Springs Middle School and there's a link to it. There are many new categories and a vast variety of different stories that students can read. Uh, we changed some of the fonts. So the newspaper last year was really dark and we didn't have a lot of categories and so this year we added a lot more so we could have more variety. The staff tries their best to write good quality stories and their work seems to have paid off. So we just think of like we brainstorm like what would be uh, interesting and like what people would like and then we go out and like get interviews and stuff for them. Christian Giordano, WSMS News. Thanks Christian. It's time for advisory check. This week in advisory we learned about unity and equality here at WSMS. Remember that despite our differences we are all leopards. One heart, one love joy. One of our very own algebra teachers here at WSMS has hit the high roads on a popular social media app, TikTok. Here's Peyton with all the excitement. Within the past year, a new social media app called TikTok has taken over the internet. Being famous on TikTok is an unimaginable goal for most, but for one of our math teachers here at WSMS, it has become a reality. Um, so when I posted the TikTok, I... Originally, some students knew that I had TikTok, so I was like, here, I'll just post a TikTok. Some of my students might find it, since a couple of them like followed me, even though I hadn't made anything yet. Mr. Goff seems like just a teacher to most, but he also happened to get popular on TikTok due to one special video. First, I was thinking like, oh, maybe I should just like write a song that's like math related. And I was like, that seems like a lot of work. What if I just take a song that's already a huge meme on TikTok? and just rewrite the words to it to a math song. So it's like, okay, bad guy is like super big meme right now. So I Although the song is merely a few seconds long, there was quite a long process for the creation of his video. So there's like five or six syllables per line. And so I was like, all right, let's just like start writing, talking about a function, because I know functions pretty well at this point. I first realized the video was going viral probably the next morning. Because uh, when I went to bed, it was at like, I think it was at a thousand views or something like that. When I woke up the next morning, it was at like 10,000 views. I was like, okay, that really seems like a lot. And so like watching it like exponentially grow was like really kind of crazy. Mr. Goff's students seem to love him for his humorous personality. They're always looking for musicians nowadays, uh, especially <laughs> math musicians. Probably won't be back next year because I'll be pursuing my new career of life on the road teaching math on TikTok. Keep an eye out for at Mr. Goff the math teacher on TikTok. More videos to come. So the weather warmed up again today after a nice cool down, but is it going to change again? I'm so glad because I'm tired of sweating. We asked students and teachers how they feel about weather finally coming to North Texas. I'm here with Ms. Barr, so what do you think of fall weather? I love fall weather. I'm ready for it to be here. I'm so excited. I'm tired of sweating every time I go outside. So I'm here with um, Mr. Jiminy Cricket. So what do you think of fall weather so far? <laughs> That's great. I'm here with Joe and Alexis. So what's your favorite part of fall weather? 
Um, during football, it's not nearly as dreadful. Alexis? I like when we can get like Starbucks in the morning and it's like pumpkin spice lattes and stuff. So fall's just aesthetically pleasing to my Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I'm here with Haley, Brayden, and Avery. So what's your favorite part of fall weather? It's colder. I like how cool it is. Um, fall clothing. Same. So I'm here with Miss Smith. What do you think of the fall weather so far? I'm very excited. I woke up this morning to go let my dogs out and I went, wow, it's cold. And it was about 52 degrees. And then my dogs are running around and then we got an email from um, Dr. Goddard that since it's fall weather, we all get to wear jeans for the entire week. So I love the jeans and my shoes. I, I was going to wear Uggs, but I thought that may have been overkill. I'm Christian, I'm Joe, here with our first male cheerleader. Um, Joe, how did you like uh, the whole seventh grade cheering you on? Uh, it was fun because it was just like all my football player friends were just next to me and they were just in the stands cheering for me while I was cheering. Thank you. What's the hardest part cheering with all the girl cheerleaders? I don't really know. There's not a whole lot of hard parts. They, they brought me in as uh, one of them basically, so. Thank you. And Judd. So as seventh graders, what did you guys think of your first pep rally? Uh, I think it was really fun because we got to ch uh, chant on Joe the entire time. Um, honestly, I think it was pretty good. Um, Joe did amazing out there. We were able to cheer on like Joe, yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm Christian here with Lorenzo, Ben, and Kyle. So what was your favorite part of the pep rally? My favorite part was the color guard. Their skeleton jackets were really cool. Watching Joe cheer. Uh, the color guard performance and Joe. Thank you. Uh, and actually, one thing the school spirit is cool. So you eighth graders, when you get to the high school. You guys gotta be loud. It's not. It's not lame to have a school spirit. Don't just sit there. So when we come back after break, we'll have another pep rally on Friday in support of saying no to drugs. Homecoming is also the Friday we get back to October 18th. McKenna and Brianna will talk about this more in history of homecoming. Yeah, especially why we have those big mums here in Texas. And Halloween is going to be here in two weeks. And finally, our science classes have a fun way to learn about Newton's three laws. Nolan Navani explains. Nolan? On Wednesday, September 25th, 8th grade science classes started a Pinewood Derby Challenge to demonstrate their learning of Newton's three laws. So this is the culminating activity for our physics unit, which is our second unit in science. And what we're doing is we're having the students demonstrate all the different concepts that they learned in physics 
using the derby track. The big picture of the project has a lot of different parts, but the first thing students do is find where the placements of weight on the car makes it go fast. The first thing they're doing is they're just doing an experiment where they're finding out the placement of the weight on the car, which placement front, middle, or end will um, make the fastest speed. Then they're going to take that location, change the mass, and see how that affects acceleration and forces. Students record the times of the car to answer analysis questions about the experiment. And then they're going to use the track, um, take pictures and little film clips to make a final project that could be used as a tutoring tool for eighth grade students getting ready to take the test. Ms. Perez says that the project is a way that the students can physically demonstrate the learning instead of taking a simple paper test. Students actually get to use the materials and physically manipulate the materials and demonstrate forces and balanced forces and unbalanced forces and it's a really good way for your brain to show their learning in a different way. The tracks took time and effort to make. Ms. Perez would like to thank those that came in on their own time to make this project possible. Um, I would like to thank um, Mr. Coonrod, which is Coach Coonrod's husband, for cutting the wood for us, and uh, Mr. Hunter for helping us assemble the track, um, Ms. Merrick for coming up on a Sunday and helping us make the three tracks that you found in your science room. Um, we worked for about five hours on a Sunday. For WSMS News, I'm Noel Nevada. Finally, we have a story about how it how important it is to stay hydrated. Here's Claudia and Mia with the story. Drinking water is crucial to staying healthy and energized throughout the day. With the excessive heat we've been seeing, dehydration could be a problem. Particularly if you're in um, athletics. The heat causes athletes to sweat away any water in their bodies, making them feel exhausted or lightheaded. Lack of water can also cause leg cramps. When you're active like that, if you get dehydrated and you don't keep drinking fluids, it messes with the electrolytes in your body and you can start having like leg cramps, um, muscle cramps. It's really important to, especially right now when we've had the 100 degree temperatures, you're sweating off a lot of the water and your electrolytes. So um, your body is going through it faster. Nurse Young says dehydration is nothing to play around about. Dehydration can have its long-term effects too. And if you're feeling some of the symptoms, don't be afraid to speak up and take a break to get water and sit down. Coach Morris says that urine color is an indicator of whether or not you're drinking enough water. Urine color does matter, so when you are checking your urine when you go to the bathroom, the lighter that the color is, the better. The darker means you need to be drinking more fluids. Drinking water is especially important for student athletes. Every 20 minutes or so, drink, drink some more. I'm Claudia Lindeberg with WSMS News. Make sure and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. That's it for our announcements. Have a good day. And remember, Leopards, Leopards Roar is one. Roar! Roar.